Hello, movies and the Bible. Um, today I'm going to be doing a Bible study for James 3. And a couple of questions I want to pose before we get started are, who is your teacher? Um, when you're seeking out wisdom and, and want to know things, who are you going to, to listen to? Um, is it a social media person? Is it a close friend or relative? Who are you listening to for advice and wisdom? Are you are you searching the Bible for answers? What what is your go to? And how do you speak to other people? How are you letting other people speak to you? Uh, those are just a couple of questions I want to pose before we get started. And I think we're going to see that these are some common themes in James 3. But let's go ahead and start. It's nighttime where I am. Uh, well, I kind of just want to start out by saying that um, I don't do the Bible studies religiously. Um but I do want to keep some sort of, you know, um, schedule up with these. Uh, so, anyway, that was just on my heart to share with this. But yeah, I don't just, you know, just churn them out. I really want to, you know, do things. Um, you know, as the Lord leads, really. But I hope you are well where you are. And let's go ahead and get started in the study. Um, I was going to be reading for the, from the New Kings James Version of the Bible. And I pray that the Lord um, use me as an instrument of, of teaching and sharing His Word. And I hope you uh, don't mind the little bit of music I have playing for this. This is probably going to be fairly short. I don't want to belabor the time with this study, so may the Lord intercede and interject at any time um, through me if he has something that he wants to share about his word that I haven't written down. So, verse 3, verse 1. My brethren, let not many of you become teachers, knowing that you shall receive stricter judgment. For all stumble in many things. If anyone does not stumble in the word, he is a perfect man, able to also bridle the whole body. Indeed, we put bits in horses' mouths so that they may obey us. And when they turn their whole body, look also at the ships. Although they are so large and are driven by fierce winds, they are turned by a very small rudder, wherever the pilot desires. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. See how great a forest a little fire kindles. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. The tongue is so set among our members that it defiles the body, the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature. And it is set on fire by hell. For every kind of beast and bird, of reptile and creature of the sea, is tamed and has been tamed by mankind. But no man can tame the tongue. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. With it we bless our God, our Father, and we curse the men who have been made of the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceeds blessings and cursings, my brethren, these things ought not be so. Does the spring send forth fresh water and bitter from the same opening? Can a fig tree, my brethren, bear olives, or a grapevine bear figs? Thus no spring yields both salt water and fresh. Verse 13. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show by the good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter and envy, self-seeking in your hearts, and do not boast and lie against the truth, this wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, demonic. Verse 16. For, there, for where 
envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Now, the fruit of righteousness is a sown in peace by those who make peace. All right, that was James 3 in its entirety. Now, we're going to go through the verses line upon line and see what we can pull out and what God wants us to know. Um, James is actually um, my favorite book aside from Ecclesiastes uh, and the entire Bible. I've read I've read James backwards and forwards and Ecclesiastes so many times because I really had a hunger for God's wisdom and knowledge because I wanted to to have God's knowledge and wisdom in my life so that I can make the best decisions possible. Short story, but let's move on from there. Okay. And verses 1 through 6, um, we essentially have um, James opening up with a, with a letter or statement. Um, uh, first saying that um, not everybody needs to teach. As we see here in verse 1. I know we have social media now. And everybody has a soapbox. Everybody's trying to preach and teach their their so-called knowledge and so-called wisdom. And tell their stories and, and hope that it helps someone. I mean, I mean, I think a lot of it is well-meaning. A lot of people have their opinions. And um, it's so widely accepted and available to hear other people's opinions and thoughts about things. But uh, here in James, it says that let not many of you become teachers because you will restrain stricter judgment. And um, we have to have a vetting process. We can't, you know, sit under the tutelage of, of everybody. Um, especially when they are not rooted and grounded in the word um, of God. For those of you who are seeking righteous teaching and and, and seeking, you know, the the holy path of life, uh, you have to be careful about who you are listening to. Um, I think this is rather timely. Um, I don't really get too into it, but well, there's um, in the black community, they just had a. Um, uh, an older man passed, Kevin Samuels, and it was, and it seemed like, and his death caused quite a, a stir, and it was kind of perplexing to me. But um, a lot of people were impacted by him, and so, and you know, some people felt as though he helped, others felt as though he made things worse. So um, we have to be careful about who we're receiving uh, teaching from. Okay. And moving on from, from verse 1, um, then it goes on to say that um, if anyone doesn't stumble in the word of God, he's a perfect man, and he's able to control his whole body. Um, like the only per person, perfect person that I know is the Lord Jesus Christ. He was able to control all of, all of, the, all of his flesh and, 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 and without sin. And um, it's and then he goes on to give an example um, about uh, how and uh, when you're when you're uh, getting ready to get on the horse, you put the uh, the reins in in the horse's mouth, and and the whole body turns by having this this um, this device. I'm going to call it a device, but you know the reins. And in the in the horse's mouth, and that and having control over the horse's jaw and mouth steers the entire body, and it's the same way with with us. Uh, when now uh, what we hear, what we listen to, and the things that we say about ourselves and say to others um, dictate and and do control um, the way in which we we move throughout life whether it's spoken over us to us, 
whatever the case may be, those things do affect our day-to-day comings and goings. And with this, especially with this social media and influencer stuff. And it gives another example with ships and how, like, yeah, and these are some things to pause and ponder about how, um, how a huge ship in the ocean is, is really controlled by a rudder. Uh, well, you know, it's computerized now, but same thing still applies. This entire ship is moved by such a small thing. Just like our mouth is a small thing, and but it controls a lot um, about our lives, and and uh, the last ones, it's just more examples of how, and put it into perspective of how uh, the tongue, uh, like a is like a. A small forest fire, like a, a great a great forest, can be brought down by a, a small a small fire, uh, like we have the fires here in America with the California, and and a, a a small spark can cause so much damage and destruction. So can our mouths. And then for um, verses seven through nine. Um, it goes on to talk of, he goes on to talk about how man has has um, tamed and controlled virtually everything on the planet except for the, our own mouths and that is something to to also think about and, and kind of be be behold that as as much control and as much leeway and and force way that we have over the earth and dominion over the earth as humans we can't control our own mouths at times sometimes we say the wrong thing sometimes we 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 slip up and misspeak and other times you know we we are we have the power to persuade people and influence people to be better than what they thought they could be as we see here in uh, verse 9 So I think, you know, if you have, um, uh, it would be wise to, you know, give thought to what are the things in which you're saying to others and and what are you receiving from others and, and the things in which they say. If they're not saying things that are going to, you know, help you uh, progress and, and be better in life and, and, and in your walk with God, it might be, it might be a good time to, you know, let that go because uh, words are very powerful. And then in verses 10 through 12, um, it's just more illustration of, of that fact that um, we can we can tear someone down and we can uh, build someone up by by um by our mouth and he's saying it not not be so um like we shouldn't we shouldn't be talking out of both sides of our mouth we can't um if you're going to be positive be positive you and it it has to be one or the other because no other natural thing like our earthly thing that we see um does this um so we have to get control over our our, our mouths we can't uh, we can't be lying about things uh, like i put the movie liar liar up there uh which is a, is a good illustration of of this thing of what we're talking about but i think uh, james really does does lay it out quite clearly that um like um you can't get salt water and fresh water from the same from the same river that that's it that, that it's either one or the other um when you see a tree bearing fruit it doesn't have multiple fruits on it it has one kind of fruit <laughs> and like you uh when you have when you see that fruit the seeds inside that fruit are going to bear more of that particular fruit 
Uh, like you have an apple with apple seeds, you're not going to get oranges out of that seed. Like, so no other, no other functioning natural thing in life is is so double minded and double sided on on anything except for human beings. Even animals have have a, a very specific God ordained order that they don't deter, don't deter from. It's only us as human beings in our fallen nature that have this problem, and it shouldn't be that way. We should be on the straight and narrow. Our yeses should be yes and our noes should be noes. <sighs> okay. And and then in verse uh, 13 through 16, uh, we have here, uh, he's asked, he poses a question all of a sudden, like, who is wise and has understanding? And then he goes on to answer that question like how would we discern that by um the person's character like do they have good conduct um um the work in what she does is it is it in meekness and and in wisdom and um you know is it done in humility all the things in which we've already been studying from proverbs and james uh previously is any of the righteous character within that person and and um that would show a person to be have have wisdom and understanding and then uh, then on contrast to this he says but if you have bitter envy and are self-seeking in your hearts do not boast and lie against the truth yeah and, and essentially you know how you are and, and and don't and don't try and you know fake the funk of you being something else. Um, if you are wanting something that someone else is after, um, I kind of want to say covetous here. Um, if you're ups- if you're just bitter about what's your own goings on in your own personal life or within yourself, um, don't boast about what you have going on because you're not happy about what's going on with you and 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 don't pretend as if you are you know just work on yourself leave it alone and let those who are like in verse 13 having good conduct and are and are doing and are meek and humble about themselves let them take the forefront let them be be this the shining example Versus, you know, you and your mess pretending to have it together and yet are not. So, um, and then, um, because this kind of um, wisdom, as it says here, uh, this kind of talk, I guess you can say, is, uh, is demonic. It says it's earthly, it's sensual, it's, it's, uh, it's, Literally about you know your senses, how you feel, not necessarily what the truth is, um, because being humble and and walking the you know the righteous life of God is not necessarily um, an easy thing to do, and sometimes it hurts us in our flesh. But then in verses sixteen, where envy and self seeking exist, confusion. And, and every evil thing are there. So here in verse in these verses for 14 through 16, we have uh, the perfect outline of, of what is demonic and wrong in in wisdom. Like, um, well essentially while it sounds good, it's not good. And um, it brings up too many questions. It's very vague. Um, you know, it's about how you feel that that vagueness gives way into, well, it it sounds right, it feels right, so therefore it must be right. And you got to be careful with that kind of stuff, and and especially on the social media junk where you know people are saying things that you you might agree with, but it's self serving, um, self seeking. It's it's just it's just gratifying towards yourself. It's not really leading to any real spiritual, you know, wellness, I guess you could say. It's not really leading to any biblical truths. 
um, or the way in which God would have us to live. It's just uh, gratifying to our flesh, not to our spirits that will ultimately determine whether we go to heaven or hell. And then in verses, I think this is the end of it here, verses 17 through 18, we have that wisdom that is from above, so essentially heavenly wisdom, God's wisdom, is pure and at first pure, it makes a, a, a real emphasis of that. First, it's pure, and then it's peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And and you're going to know the fruit of this because it's sown in peace by those who make peace. Like, if you are, you know, sharing things and it's, and it's so, you know, contentious and, and, and controversial, I, it's not of God, I guess, um, and that's the best but that I can put it. Uh, uh, forgive me for not being as eloquent as maybe I, I could be about this, but you have to take a good hard look at this social media junk, and you have these so-called influencers who are giving all this so-called advice and wisdom, but is it pure? Is it peaceable? Is it gentle? Is it willing to yield? Is it full of mercy? And, and is it without partiality or, or hypocrisy? And I think that um, a real like telling way is, uh, are they being hypocritical? Are they practicing what they preach? And hopefully you've been getting something out of um, Proverbs and James that we've studied so thus far to, to um, make you aware and, and discern what is biblical wisdom, what is, you know, the right way to be and, and to think about any given thing, because that's really all that you need. And it'll steer you away from a lot of this junk out here, um, which I, which can be entertaining, but it's not the truth which is sometimes agreeable, but it's not the truth. The only truth is the Bible and how you're measuring up to that Bible and how you're trying to live up to that Bible is the best way to be. So the summary and takeaway for this one is uh, to monitor our mouths and uh, for me, I also put that demonic wisdom is self-serving and, and of no benefit to uh, our spiritual well-being. It's just, it sounds good and it feels good. But yeah, that's really all I had for James 3. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I hope to revisit this later. And I've been thinking of some ideas. Um as we wind down on uh, on Proverbs and, and James, and we're going to go into Ecclesiastes, and I have some ideas of, of what I want to talk about in the future now that we've built up this foundation of, of God's wisdom. But I will see you in the next one. Be safe, be kind, be wise. Bye-bye.